Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Hi, it's Jeffrey W. Ingram, and thank you for coming to my episode on the rules breakout for the World Builder's Anvil. Now, the rules breakout, I'm sorry, I have to jump right into this one. This is really where we start talking about how to build a framework for a world. And the rules breakout is very important. And I'm going to write down some of the rules that I use. And the thing you have to understand is all the rules that I use might not work for you. So when you come up with your own rules that you govern, make it based off of what you believe. And the reason that is, is it will help you create a filter. So when you're going through creating a new race or you're creating a new culture, you can run it through this filter to make sure that you're not breaking any rules. And I think it's really even more important when you talk about creating people or events that happen in your universe. They have to be explainable in your universe. And people will give you a lot of leeway. If you want to have vampires that spread vampirism through a mind melt like Vulcans do, you can do it, but you have to be consistent with it. People will give you a lot of leeway in fiction. When they're interacting with your fiction, they'll give you a lot of leeway. But if you're not consistent... Readers are smart. Video game players are smart. When you're not consistent, they will bust you out and they will have trouble interacting with your stories going going into the future. Well, that is a really bad problem to have. Okay. So the way I start with the rules for my for my world, my universe, is I look at the rules that I believe exist in our universe. A lot of those rules are based off of science. I do believe that there is a Big Bang. Now, I don't know whether or not there was a great and grand God behind it or not. However, I do believe that there was a Big Bang. I don't know what caused it. I do believe that solar systems, suns, and planets develop over time and then go away over time. And maybe the universe will do the same thing. I'm not so sure on that one. But, you know, it's it's a thought exercise. But I want to go through some of these for myself as I'm preparing a filter for my world. And the first one is, is it creation or evolution or both? And the reason this is important is you want to know the truth in your universe of why it started. Now, in my universe, there is no culture, no race that knows the truths. Some might get closer to others in certain parts, but they really don't know. However, this is for me to know. So I have this filter to run things past when I talk about stuff in my world. For example, Garduel is actually both. There was God with a capital G who who sort of started the process. And then evolution happened throughout time after that. Now, does your world, does your universe have to end? And more than likely or not, there will be an end to your world. However, it doesn't have to be. It could go on forever. Or it could be ending as part of your story. And that's what you're talking about, the ending of it. Or maybe it's the beginning And you want to be there at the beginning of your world. Either way you want to do it, you need to know, does my world have a beginning? Does my world have an ending? And within that, it might or might not impact the story, but it's just a good frame of reference to know. But you might want to know where you're at within that because that will have an impact on your story. If the sun in your solar system is about to explode and you don't have the people even discussing it, when it explodes and the story ends, the reader's going to feel let down. The person who's Interacting with the stories and be like, wait, that's what? That was lame. And you don't want to leave them with that frame of thought. Theory of relativity. The impact of mass on time. That's another thing that I like to think about in my world. And it does exist in my universe. It has no impact in the stories I have in. But the size of the world, the time it takes to rotate around the sun of my solar system, it has an impact. It's one my people will probably never realize. Even if I get into the space part of it. I probably will never go much into the theory of relativity, but it's important to realize that the larger the mass, the slower time is going to be perceived. The smaller the mass, the quicker the time is going to be perceived. And the, the length around a sun is typically what we call a year, 
which could be vastly different on Earth, or is vastly different on Earth than to Mars. And so I, the importance of the year and the length of the seasons is determined by that. And, and when I say theory of relativity, I don't necessarily mean the scientific formula for it, but the idea of how time is impacted by your, your world. The other important thing to think about with worlds going around things are there are now worlds that they've discovered or they believe they've discovered that don't have orbits like Earth that aren't roughly circular around the center of the of their uh, solar system. Some have really long orbits. So if you have a planet that has an orbit that stretches out into the far reaches of the solar system, it's going to be hot like Mercury at some times and cold like Pluto at other times. Talk about winter's coming. I mean, if your planet spends, you know, even a couple days out where Pluto is, it's going to be exceptionally cold. And then summer is going to get extremely hot. And to have races that survive there, you really have to think about what makes them able to survive the extreme hot and the extreme cold of this planet's orbit. The speed of light. This is probably more important if you're running a science fiction game. But it's something I like to think about either way. And the idea is there is no physical speed that can exceed the speed of light, which is a constant throughout the universe. Now, if people can travel faster than light is a slightly different question. But is that the maximum speed? And the reason that's important is in the scope of a universe, traveling at the speed of light is very, very slow. So if that is a constant, you have to find ways, if you want interstellar travel, to be able to travel faster than the speed of light, which you can't do in normal space-time. For example, I think of Stargate with wormholes that connect two planets together. So in Stargate, I could step through the Stargate and travel nearly instantaneously, if not instantaneously, to another spot in the universe. And they never got into super detail of exactly how the wormhole worked. They kind of teased at it, but they never really explained it well. And you don't necessarily need to to your readers or your storytellers, but you have to have a consistent way to cheat the speed of light if that is actually a law in the universe that your world exists in. Now, magic. Magic's a very common one to have in fantasy. And sometimes it will stretch out into paranormal or into maybe urban fantasy, but it's not necessarily always in any of those settings. And sometimes even into science fiction, However, you might get into arguments with other science fiction writers on whether or not your book is fantasy or science fiction. Now, I think it's important to know if magic exists and how do people interact with it. And then later on when you develop your cultures, there might be certain ways they interact with it and that could change over time. Um, and the other important thing a lot of people like to deal with is magic versus technology, or maybe not, where it's the idea where magic actually maybe fades as technology grows. That's a very common theme I see with magic versus technology. And my world doesn't work that way, but it might appear to from someone who casually observes it because it looks like spell casting goes away and factories get built up. But you have to know if there is magic, how does it work? How do people interact with it? And, you know, is it supplied from a power from a deity? Or is it actually a skill people can learn? Do they have to be born with it? These are all answers you have to know and you have to be consistent with. And when you break the rule, which is fine, you have to create a new rule for your world to explain how exceptions can happen. And now, one I love to deal with because I love talking about religion in my uh, fantasy world. Are the gods and or God real? And the reason this is important and how real are they to the cultures? Does, you know, Zeus live li literally on a mountain in your Greece? If he does, and he can literally strike people down with lightning bolts, that's going to have probably a much easier time controlling the population and, and making sure the worship is happening correctly or punishing people at his will. Is there a God with a capital G, sort of like the Christian God or, or, or Azora Ashtonist God, some other God that is out there? How much do they interact with people on Earth? You know, maybe you have a God with a capital G who exists but doesn't really interfere much, or at least not directly. Maybe he deals directly all the time, and you get back to this Zeus question, but on a much more cosmic, you know, power scale. And then the last thing I, I like to consider is how many dimensions are there in your world? 
And I'm really getting a bit philosophical here because, well, I like to do that, but where does your volume exist in the physical world? That's like the first three dimensions as I understand it. The fourth dimension is really time. And for me, those are the four dimensions of my world. It is the physical reality of something and where does it exist within the time frame of the world. Now, there are theoretical other dimensions out there you can do research on. Uh, some are fascinating. Most of them blow my mind apart. And if you're not doing hardcore science fiction, you might not go there. Or you might do it in a different way and say supernatural exists, but maybe in another dimension. If you're going to have other dimensions, you, you need to define those dimensions much in the same way you, you define your own world. And how do interactions happen between them? You know, maybe an extra dimensional being, if they're supernatural, has to be called forth through a portal to get to your world. Or maybe it works the other way around where you can be pulled out of your world into another dimension if you're summoned by a being. But how does that interaction work? You want to have rules for it so when it happens, there's a consistency to it. Now, the rating for this one, well, it's basic at a level, but it's also intermediate or advanced depending on where you want to go. It's basic that you need to have this filter when you create things that they're consistently showing up the same way throughout your world. However, some of these topics can get quite advanced, maybe even a little a little crazy, but that's fine. Just understand that each of these take work, and it's really, you're creating a, a, a telescope to look at your world through. So you can look at your world and say, does it make sense through these rules? And each rule is just another condition. Is this true? Does this break this rule? If this exists, does it destroy the idea of creation? If this exists, does it change the theory of relativity? Or does this thing go faster than the speed of light? And if so, how does it do it? Very important stuff. So I'm going to have to give it the rating of basic. However, you have to understand that the topics within there can range all the way up to a bit crazy. Now, the world building task for the day is create your list of truths for your world. And if you want to, you can go share them on Gardul.com, G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Go right into the show notes for this episode and share them right in your comments. Go to our Facebook page, share them there. Let us know what the rules are for your world. What are the basic ideas that everything has to obey? And if you want to break it, that's fine. Remember, you're going to have to come up with a reason why. And now your real world task for the day. <laughs> and a lot of these are really based off of me and my insanities. And over time, they'll probably spread out some. But prepare your lunch tonight for work tomorrow. So if you have to work tomorrow or Monday, the night before, make your lunch. Uh, you'll have a little bit more time left in the morning. And it will make the people you live with feel like you're going to actually eat food during the day and not just scribble notes on paper. So very important. Prepare your lunch. I have time before you go to work, you'll save money and the sanity of the people who love you. And now for the tease. The next episode is even more exciting for me. It's the technology breakdown. I mean, who would not want a technology breakdown? I know I do. I'm sure if you're listening to this, you must want a technology breakdown too. But we'll talk about technology and how it impacts your world. Thanks for joining us this episode of the World Builders Anvil. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes. And please help get the word out to your friends about our show. And join me, Jeffrey W. Ingram at Garduel.com to see the progress of my world and learn why I made the choices I did. And please contact me and let me know the topics you would love to hear in the future. Now strike, why the myth rolls high.